For years, the executive market has been dominated by the German trio of the Audi A6, BMW 5 Series and Mercedes E-Class. But more recently, challengers from outside Bavaria have really started to make their stamp. Cars like the Jaguar XF from the UK and from Sweden, there's this, the Volvo S90. Straight away, you can tell that more effort has gone into giving the S90 a stronger presence on the road. After all, Volvos have got something of a reputation for being extremely safe, but a bit dull. It features the new Volvo grille and Thor Hammer daytime running lights. Even at the back, the tail lamps all look very futuristic. Inside the cabin isn't like anything we've seen before on a Volvo in a good way. The dash is neatly laid out and all the materials have a real premium feel to it. There's no sense of penny pinching anywhere. All the buttons and controls have been replaced by what looks like a tablet in the middle of the center console. This infotainment system controls everything from the car setup to DAB radio, heater controls, Bluetooth and sat nav. It's fairly self-explanatory to use, but a little tricky to operate when on the move. The seats, as always in Volvos, are very comfortable and supportive, and as you'd expect, fully adjustable. As too is the steering wheel, which moves in and out as well as up and down. Forward visibility is also very good too. The rear view has slightly been compromised though in the interest of styling, which can make parking a little more tricky. However, an all round 360 degree camera and even automatic parking help make things a little easier on that front. Space is one of the biggest selling points in the S90, put simply, it's one of the biggest cars in its class. Anyone who sat up front won't be short of head and legroom, and even if the front seats are slid all the way back, there isn't an issue with legroom in the rear. One slight problem though is this central transmission tunnel. Now that's going to impede legroom for anyone who sat in the middle seat. The 500 litre boot isn't quite on a par with the BMW 5 Series or Audi A6, but there's still plenty of room for some large suitcases and its square dimensions means that there isn't any wasted space. The power lineup comprises of two 2 litre diesels with either 187 brake horsepower or 232. Although a more powerful T8 petrol electric hybrid is on the horizon. Unlike the estate though, the S90 is only available as a two wheel drive. So if you find yourself towing regularly, the estate would be the best choice. The lower powered D4 will retain an official combined fuel economy of over 60 miles per gallon, which is about six miles per gallon more than the D5. Whichever model you opt for, the S90 is a quiet cruiser and is right at home on long motorway journeys. Ride comfort is impressive, especially if you go for the optional air suspension. Around town, the ride is generally composed too, although the large wheels can make the ride feel a little firm over big bumps. The offset of having a comfortable ride though is the handling, which feels a little more lethargic than the BMW 5 Series. It remains composed on twisty high-speed roads, but you never feel at one with it. The steering doesn't really offer much in the way of letting you know what the front wheels are doing. While the S90 is an excellent premium saloon, it's still not quite the all singing, all dancing match for rivals from Audi, BMW and Mercedes. That's not to say it's worth discounting, it's definitely got a lot of positives and it's styling, comfortable ride and equipment list make it an attractive proposition. It's just a shame it's let down by a limited engine lineup and a rather uninvolving driving experience. <laughs>